I've spent the past decade at Cambridge Medical School learning how to be a doctor and a researcher in habits and addictive behaviours. And so I've spent years learning the biology and the psychology of human behaviour and also practically how to increase my own energy levels to make sure that I could do the work after long shifts at the hospital. So I'm going to explain how energy works, why you always feel so tired after work and the biggest thing that is draining your energy that nobody seems to be talking about so you can finally start focusing and making progress on your goals and start living a life that you actually want. I've spent years learning the biology and the biochemistry, very, very complicated stuff about how energy is formed in the human body, but I've realized that none of that is relevant for most people and all you have to understand is this. So your problem right now is that you are not doing the task that you want to do after work and any task any action requires energy to stop doing other actions and do that one. And so in my head, you're not lazy, you just haven't got enough energy to do it. And one thing that you would have learned in school is a basic rule of physics called the conservation, conservation of energy, which basically means that energy cannot be created or destroyed it's just transferred from other places. So if you want to increase the energy that you have, you either have to increase the energy coming in or decrease the energy coming out. So basically speaking, you can think of your energy as the profit that you have from ins and outs. So profit is revenue minus costs, right? Revenue minus costs, so ins minus outs. Simple, right? So the amount of energy that you have to do any action, so let's say the energy that you have stored in yourself equals the energy in minus the energy out. And so most of the advice that we get online is about the energy coming in. So, you know, eating better, sleeping more, getting more sunlight. These are things that are very, very good, but nobody really talks about the energy coming out. And I'd actually argue that managing the energy out first is better because then you have less energy coming out, then you have more energy, and then you have more energy to do the good things that give you more energy, right? So obviously everything that we do costs energy, right? Anything that you do, you have to go to work, cool, you have to, you know, self-care, like eat, like cooking and these sorts of things, going to the gym, all of that. Like there's an infinite amount of things that kind of come out here and take away your energy. And so then you ask the question, where do you start? How do you decrease your energy coming out in the most effective way that means that you can start feeling like you have more energy to do what you actually want to do, right? One thing that comes from science is that between 40 and 95% of what we do are everyday habits. So it makes sense to start here. All right, I've redrawn it just for space. So you have the ins, the things that give you energy like food, water, sleep, sunlight, and then that puts into your store of energy. And then what comes out is, you know, work and all of the tasks that you need to do. Every single thing costs energy, right? Now, one thing, the first practical thing that you can do today is making decisions about what you're going to do in advance. We know that, you know, different tasks cost energy, but also the decisions to make the task, like choosing what to do, also takes energy. That's something called ego depletion. Effectively, it means that when you are choosing to do something, it costs energy. Like, you, you know that, right? When you aren't sure what to do, you like get in your head and it's like hard to decide what to do. That costs energy, right? So if you make decisions before, then you minimize that energy that it comes, it comes out just without even doing anything. So I would recommend having a timetable. If you have a timetable of what you're going to do the next day, you have it all laid out. So at this time you're doing this, at this time you're doing this, at this time you're doing this. It means that you don't have any of this decision cost. And so you have more energy to do the things that you wanted to do. And then the next thing, one of the harsh things about life is that we want to do everything, right? All of us always want to do everything, right? If I could, I would be a figure skater, right? Because it's cool. If I could, I'd want to, you know, go paragliding and all of these things. But there is only so much energy that you have 
and you have to make sure that even though there's the internet around us and you you know you can be told that you can learn five different languages and you have all of the ability to do so you need to understand that you can't do everything that you always, you can't maximize this by trying to do everything you don't have an infinite amount of energy and so you have to prioritize the most important things and that doesn't mean you have to you know, make sacrifices on all the things that you want to do. It just means that right now, pick one thing that you want to do and sacrifice the rest for now. Bring them in later once you've accomplished this one thing. Fine, if they're that important. But most of the things just needs to be let go of. And now, the biggest, biggest mistake that nobody talks about that people are too scared to talk about, to be honest, is managing people, managing your relationships. Your relationships, they are costly in themselves, right? People think that it's just about tasks, but one of the things that we do, one of the tasks, one of the actions that we do every single day is talk to people, right? Now, people are very, very, very important in your life. Everybody has people in their life that actually drain your energy more than they give you energy. Unfortunately, sometimes it's your family, sometimes it's people that you've known your whole life. And unfortunately, those people drain more than you have, right? They might be the reason why you haven't got enough energy to do the things that you want to do. It's a sad, sad truth, but it is the truth. Now, this is the thing with people. People are very, very interesting because, because people can be either bad, they can take your energy away, or People can increase your energy, the right people. So really, it's about managing your relationships to get more of these and less of these. And you know, I might be telling you that you need to stop talking to some people, and I am, but genuinely, genuinely, that is what's gonna give you the most stored energy that you can do to make yourself the best version of yourself and have the life that you want. If you're trying to do all of these good things, right? Having the wrong people around you can give you friction to doing those things. They can make it harder and more energetically demanding to do those things, right? But the right people can make it easier. They can be like, oh, let's go to the gym together. That makes it easier. It's less of a cost here. And so you have more energy to do even more things, right? This is the most important thing the most important thing when it comes to getting your energy. Sometimes your family's toxic. Sometimes the girl you're in a relationship with isn't good for you. Sometimes your friends that you've known for ages that you love are not good for you anymore. I've studied the science for years and this is all you need to know to make sure that you have enough energy after work and this is what you can do today to do it. But if you feel like you haven't been able to focus, your attention span is messed up, then click this video on the screen or explain what an attention span even is and how to fix it so you can make progress on your goals and actually do the work.